This video explains how to use Suburb Analyzer on the DSR Data website. I'll explain what metrics are available, context rulers, historical charts, and I'll use these to examine a suburb for its investment potential. You'll see this page after login. That's assuming you have a Lite or Pro membership. You start by typing the name of the suburb that you want to analyze. And I'm going to examine Greenwood in Perth, since it popped up as uh, a potential investment candidate recently. So I want to examine that more thoroughly. You'll see a bunch of statistics appear, and you can easily switch between statistics for houses to statistics for units using these two radio buttons. You notice the data is um, split up into three different tabs. Currently, we're looking at the statistics on the basic DSR tab. The DSR Plus and the SSI tabs are only available for pro members. I'll come to those in a minute. Oh, by the way, I put together a video on how to choose between Lite and Pro. You'll find a link to that video on the pricing page. It's a pretty important video. I urge you to check it out. Okay, many of these statistics you've probably seen before, like auction clearance rates and vacancy rates. Some metrics uh, might have odd names, like the typical value, which is similar to the median, but with a bit of uh, cleverness thrown in to try and get a more reliable figure, since medians can throw up some anomalies from time to time. If you're not sure what a metric means, use these blue information icons. A one-liner explanation of the metric will pop up, and if that one-liner is not enough, there's a link at the end for more detail, and that will take you to a page dedicated to explaining that metric. And you can see a complete list of all the statistics available on the statistics page. Go to the services page and you'll see a link there. Okay, to the right of each metrics value are two buttons. The first column of buttons are context rulers. I'll show you one. This is a context ruler for the demand to supply ratio. Note that this is the basic DSR or version one. Version 2 is called the DSR Plus, and that's available on the DSR Plus tab. There's been some confusion about the difference between DSR Basic and DSR Plus, so I put together a video explaining that difference. Be sure to see that video if you are at all unclear, because it is really important. Okay, what's the purpose of the context ruler? Well, how do you know if a metric for the suburb that you've chosen is good or bad. If you're already familiar with this statistic, you may have a fair idea, but what about one you've never even heard of before? And that's a question context rulers aim to answer. A context ruler places any metric for any suburb in context. It does this by comparing the metric's value for this suburb against values for the same metric in all other suburbs countrywide. And the demand to supply ratio for Greenwood houses at the end of August 2022 was 59 out of a possible maximum of 100. The average DSR for all suburbs around Australia was 56, and the median was also 56. The maximum, though, was 75, and the minimum was 38. Green is good, and red is bad. That's the same for every context ruler. So we want our suburb to have the highest possible demand to supply ratio, but it's only 59. It's above average, but nowhere near 75. At this point, you might be thinking, oh, there's not much potential for Greenwood, but there's a significant difference between the basic DSR and the DSR Plus, which I'll come to soon. Now, if you aren't familiar with a metric and want to know what a good value for that metric is, examine the context ruler for that metric. And remember that green is good, and red is bad. The second column of buttons show historical charts for each metric. And this comes in handy for two reasons, trends and volatility. I'll start with volatility. Uh, a good example can often be found with vacancy rates. So I'll bring that one up. Notice how the line on this chart 
is bouncing up and down from month to month. And this is often the case in markets where the volume of transactions is quite small. If there are only 100 houses in Greenwood that are owned by landlords, that is 100 rentals, then it only takes one of them to become vacant for the vacancy rate to jump by 1%. Now, 1% doesn't sound like much, but when the sign of a balanced market is a vacancy of only 2%, 1% is a significant shift. And as you can see, uh, despite the volatility, there's only been one month in the last three years with a vacancy above 1%. And for the last couple of years, it looks to be around half a percent. So no worries here for getting a tenant. Volatility in a chart suggests we don't know what the current value for a metric really is since it changes radically from month to month. Since vacancy rates are almost always volatile, I check the chart to see if this month's figure is a, is a one-off low and that normally uh, the vacancy rate might be uh, much higher. That would be worrying, but there are no worries here. Uh, I also check another very important metric for volatility, but it's on the DSR Plus tab, so perhaps now is a good time to visit that data. Remember, light subscribers are restricted to the first tab only. I've logged in as a pro member. The DSR Plus tab may contain metrics you're not familiar with, so make good use of those blue information icons uh, down the left side. And remember, you can see the full list of statistics on the statistics page, which you can reach via the services page. The most important metric on the website is the DSR Plus. It is the most accurate gauge of supply and demand. Greenwood Houses have a DSR Plus of 75. To see how good that is, I'll bring up the context ruler. And you can see that 75 is well above average, edging towards exceptional. This is quite a different reading from the basic DSR. Let me just go back to the basic DSR tab uh, and I'll open that context ruler. Notice how different it is. 59 is above average, but it's nothing special. In fact, this is in the 60th percentile. So the basic read on supply and demand suggests slightly above average. But if we go back to the DSR Plus tab, which is the more accurate measure of the DSR Plus, that suggests this is an exceptional market. The context ruler shows that a DSR Plus of 75 places this market in the first percentile. And by the way, I, I created a video explaining the difference between the basic DSR and the DSR Plus. It's well worth a look. In a nutshell, the basic DSR is version one of the demand to supply ratio, and DSR Plus is version two. Version two, obviously better than version one. And that video shows by how much. There are actual calculations of uh, the accuracy difference, and they're expressed in dollar terms too. So you can see just how important the DSR Plus is. Uh, okay, why did I come here? Oh yeah, volatility. I always check the volatility of the DSR Plus, so let's see what the historical chart has to show. There's a little bit of volatility, but most of the last three years has been fairly stable. What I don't want to see is that last month's figure is radically higher than the month before it. A sudden jump, say 10 points from last month to this month, might reflect some unreliable data. The DSR Plus includes a total of 17 metrics, and that means uh, more than just one has to go really wonky to give a bad read of supply and demand overall. But when you consider that, that some metrics might be missing altogether, uh, like there were no auctions, uh, then it's possible in a small market to get some anomalies. Uh, unit markets in outer suburbs, for example, or, or house markets in CBD or CBD fringes uh, are good examples. So don't trust the data implicitly. Have a healthy level of skepticism. I have spent many years acquiring and analyzing heaps of different data sets. I've learned not to trust any single metric. I've seen some um, truly spectacular anomalies. For example, percentage stock on market. Can it get greater than 100%? How can you have more properties for sale 
than there are actual properties in the suburb. You can only advertise for sale what's there, right? Wrong. You can sell what's not there yet. Off the plan properties don't exist yet, for example. Anyway, I don't think I've I've seen I don't think I've ever seen a data set that, that didn't have anomalies of some sort in it. I know that doesn't sound good coming from someone who's supposed to be selling data, but I've been fooled by it before as a property investor, and I don't want you to be. So have a healthy level of skepticism. Uh, sooner or later, the data is going to lie to you. And that's why I always check the historical chart for key metrics. Ask yourself, does the latest month's figure look normal compared to the last, say, six months? Oh, and there's a metric that you can use for an overall idea of how reliable the data is for a suburb. It's called statistical reliability. And it's a score out of 100. The higher the score, the more reliable the data is. Now, checking the context ruler for statistical reliability for this suburb, we can see that the data we have is very reliable uh, with a score of 81. And the average nationally is just over 60. So uh, make sure you check the statistical reliability is decent before assuming you know the state of supply and demand for any suburb. Now, another thing I use historical charts for is to look for a trend. If the DSR Plus has been on its way down, perhaps after a long period of uh, above average growth, then I'm less interested in that suburb. There may still be heat in the market uh, and more growth to come, but we might be near the tail end of it. So ideally, I want to see the DSR breaking into new ground. And this chart suggests that's what's happening. Uh, you can also check the typical value historical chart uh, to see if we may be too late entering this market. Uh, this is on this is back on the uh, DSR basic tab. And what I'm checking for here is whether there has been too much capital growth already that might suggest I've missed the boat. And this chart, well, it does show about 20% growth already. That ordinarily would be of some minor concern. However, the national growth rate for the last three years has been comfortably in excess of 20%. So this is actually not bad to compared to most other suburbs. Okay, you might be wondering, well, how much past growth is too much? And there's no fixed figure. Some suburbs might have 25% growth over the last couple of years, uh, and that's the end of their growth spurt. Other suburbs might be just ramping up after 25%, and uh, really rapid growth surge is, is about to come. But the general rule to follow, uh, that's to decrease your chances of buying at the peak, is the more growth there has been in the recent past, the less growth there will be in the immediate future. And on that topic, there's a metric on the DSR Plus tab uh, called Market Cycle Timing, or MCT for short. The MCT helps with this past growth analysis. It's a score out of 100 for the likelihood that a suburb is about to enter its next growth phase. And for Greenwood Houses, it's 66, which is pretty good. Uh, this score, this MCT score, is, is based on historical growth patterns. The MCT calculations look at growth over a range of periods in the past, like the last six months, the last couple of years, uh, and even growth over the last 10 years. Then it munges all that up into a single score out of 100. And the score reflects how closely this suburb's recent growth matches the typical pattern for growth that we've seen in the past for a market that is about to start its next growth surge. Uh, let's look at the context ruler. Oh, well, th there you go. Well above average compared to the rest of the nation. And this is because we've gone through a big boom in recent years. So most suburbs will have a low MCT. By the way, the MCT score is included in the DSR Plus. So you don't need to check the, the MCT, you just need to check the DSR Plus. Note that you might find a suburb with a bad MCT but a good DSR Plus. What that means is, despite there being significant growth already, uh, this market hasn't finished its growth surge. And you'll frequently see conflicting metrics. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a perfect market where every metric is pointing in the right direction. The DSR Plus factors all that in, so you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so that's historical charts. Use them to check for trends, uh, especially with the DSR Plus and uh, the typical value, and also use them 
to check for volatility, especially the DSR plus, uh, but also vacancy rates. All right, the last tab, SSIs. SSI stands for Strategy Suitability Index. You may have heard me say that capital growth is the ants pants of property investing. And yes, the DSR Plus is geared for assessing suburbs for their growth potential. But you can still use the DSR Plus website to find suburbs suitable for other investment strategies. And this is where the SSI tab comes in. You'll see a list of scores here for different investment strategies. Each score or index is out of 100. When the DSR munges all those metrics into a single score, it considers some metrics more important than others. Uh, each, met each metric has a, a different weighting or, or importance level, and that weighting changes with a different focus, with a different investment strategy. For example, if you're planning a Renault flip, a renovation flip, uh, that is you want to buy a property, renovate and sell it, you want to sell that property as quickly as possible. This is once it's complete. So days on market is a more important metric for this strategy. And let's say you're after high cash flow property, then you want a score that favours suburbs with higher yields and with lower vacancy rates. For example, the uh, cash flow SSI for Greenwood is 67. And if we look at the context ruler, we can see that this is not a bad market for cash flow compared to most other suburbs from around the country. And you can use this cash flow SSI metric in the market matcher if you're hunting for the best cash flow suburbs. Um, you can see the services page for a link to the market matcher. By the way, uh, the cash flow SSI also considers capital growth. So it's not purely focused on yield, but it does favor yield more highly than growth. So it's a better option when hunting for cash flow suburbs than simply using yield on its own. Okay, so the strategy suitability indexes come in handy when you want to assess a suburb uh, for its potential for a specific strategy. And there are a couple of things that I would look at, I would do differently in my research if I am after cash flow instead of growth. Firstly, I would check the yield historical chart, which is back on the DSR tab. I want to make sure that the latest month's figure is not an anomaly, a one-off. And as you can see, uh, it's very consistent, so all good there. The second thing that I want to check is the TV historical chart to ensure prices aren't dropping. So sometimes yields can get high due to prices falling. You want yields to be high due to rising rents, not falling values. And again, uh, you can see there, no dramas. And the third thing that I check is back on the DSR Plus tab, it's the percentage of rent growth. This is measured over the last 12 months. Have low vacancy rates put pressure on rents to rise? Well, uh, you can see that rents have risen 11% uh, over the last 12 months. That's not anything special, uh, but at least it's healthy. Uh, and let's also check the historical chart. And yeah, that's a positive trend for rental growth. Okay, that's it for the suburb analyzer. Remember to use the context rulers if you're unsure about a metric, check the statistical reliability of the data for that suburb uh, and check historical charts for volatility, especially the DSR plus. In summary, the suburb analyzer is used to examine a suburb more closely. But how do you know which suburb to examine? Why did I choose Greenwood? Well, that's where the market matcher comes in. Be sure to check out that video too. And there's a link to the market matcher on the services page. Be sure to check that out. Oh, and the help page is a pretty good resource too. If those pages still haven't helped you, send me a message via the green help button at the bottom right of any page. Uh, oh, and lastly, if you're finding it all a bit too much, or if you simply want someone else to do all this research for you, there's a research service that I provide. Use the green help button to get in touch. Thanks for watching.